Now that we have all our components figured out and a pretty good regulator for our output, we can also look at how we could generate a variable output voltage. First, we could do this by varying the R2 resistor. By doing so, this will change our voltage divider effectively changing our output voltage. This is all well and good, but remember, this is a microcontroller, and we do have a CPU at our disposal that can add an element of intelligence to our design. Some of the microcontrollers available here at Microchip come with a variable voltage reference control register called VRCon. Here we can configure the software or firmware to change this reference voltage based on external conditions. The possibilities are limited only by the programmer's imagination. By varying the reference voltage, you are effectively changing when the comparator will output either a high or a logic low. This makes for a very robust design. As it turned out, I came to find out that I also needed a negative voltage on the same design. So we poured another cup of coffee and the engineer walked me through a voltage inverter design. This could easily be accomplished using the same components we used in the voltage doubler design. By simply removing the supply voltage and applying the output capacitor to the anode of the D1 diode, this could be used to create a voltage output that is a negative approximation of our clock out amplitude. How it works is fairly straightforward. On the high transition of the clock period, the transfer capacitor will charge. This will leave a positive voltage at the node between our two diodes that I have labeled on the diagram VX, equal to the threshold voltage of the D2 diode. Here's where the magic happens. On the negative going transition of the clock out signal, the voltage shown at node VX becomes more negative than the voltage at node V out. This will forward bias the diode D1 and current begins to flow across C out. The voltage across both the transfer and output capacitors will balance out. This causes the voltage at node V out to drop below zero volts. As the clock output of the microcontroller continues, the capacitors will continue to average the voltage supplied added to the previous charge across them. Eventually, the output voltage will settle to a value equal to a negative of whatever the amplitude of our clock signal is, plus whatever the threshold voltages are of the diodes. This was great. We finished our coffee and I hurried back to my cube and immediately jotted down a few notes from our conversation. By using only a few external components, I was able to create additional voltage in my circuit without eating up board real estate. Not only could I regulate this voltage using the comparator on the microcontroller along with a resistor divider using basic Ohm's law, but I could also use the clock output pin as a pump to the basic charge pump circuit. I could even get fancy and provide a variable output voltage simply by changing the reference voltage on the comparator using the voltage reference control register found on some PIC microcontrollers. Capacitor selection seemed reasonable. All I had to do was figure out what my load resistance would be and keep the output capacitor value at least 10 times what I calculated for the transfer capacitor.